Welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance, and I have the great pleasure and honor today to uh, be joined by Tifa Robles. So, Tifa, welcome to the show. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. Great. And um, yeah, so why don't you tell us, I guess rather than me doing an introduction, why don't you tell us about like who you are and uh, what you've been up to? Yeah, so I'm a lifelong gamer. Uh, I have been in the gaming industry for over a decade now. Uh, last year, I actually quit my job to be a full-time writer, uh, revising my novel that I started when I was 14 years old. It is now up on Kickstarter called The Explorers of Azulicent. Uh, it's a feminist themed fantasy young adult novel um, that means a lot to me and so far the support has been really great but we still have a long way to go. Um, besides that people might know me from the Lady Planeswalker Society. Uh, I'm also a co-host on the Gen Con show Table Takes. Uh, yeah and I write for tabletoptest.com. And uh, so I first heard about you from uh, Ken Gagne's Polygamer show. Um, I think you've been on there twice now, right? Yeah, Ken and I go way back. We met at PAX East in 2014. He was actually moderating a panel that I was on about feminism and gaming. Awesome. That's really cool. So, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, related to the um, the Kickstarter, why don't you, I guess you said you started that. How old were you when you started I was it? 14 when I first, like, drafted the characters and started coming up with the idea for the story. That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, and then it sounds like you had made several revisions over the years, but then kind of left it like dormant for a long time, right? Yeah, I so it was something like I finished the first draft when I was 17. Mm -hmm. um, about a year later, I went to college for a creative writing degree. Uh, while I was in college, I did like a couple revisions, sort of light revisions, just like reading through it, making sure, you know, it could be the best that it could be at that point um, with the full intent that after I got my degree, I would jump into it and get it ready to publish. Uh, but I actually started working at Wizards of the Coast in my final uh, quarter of college, and the game industry sort of swallowed me whole, <laughs> and it was really hard to have free time to do anything else. Um, so yeah, I didn't really look back for a while. I looked at it a couple times uh, when I first like started dating my my now husband and wanted him to read it like I did a little revision before showing it to him. So I, I have to imagine like you know when you're 14 you're probably writing a lot of stories. What made this one kind of stand out from all of the other stuff that you probably were writing at the time? So it was very inspired by my obsession with RPG video games. Um, pretty much all the Final Fantasy games, Legend of Dragoon, uh, a few others like that, uh, that I was super into. And I got this idea in my head of, I want to create like my own RPG. Um, and as I started going down that path and just really was drawn to these characters and putting myself into them, uh, it just started becoming really important to me in a way that no other story had. So when you were actually doing your creative writing degree, did you uh, turn in any like chapters of the story or anything like that, like for assignments, or did you kind of keep it close to your, you know? I kept it close to my chest. I mean, okay. I did I did take some novel writing classes and that kind of stuff, but I came up with new stuff. Um, yeah, this is this has always been so personal that I was very afraid to share it outside of like close friends and family, um, which actually part of the process the last year that's been huge for me uh, has been getting this out to peer reviewers. My first round of peer feedback was really, really hard for me. Um, I w and I realized my novel wasn't as far as I'd wanted it to be, which is good. Uh, like it was hard to hear, but it was important. And I know it's going to be all the better for it. <laughs> so actually, let, yeah, let's talk about the actual story itself, because I think it, it seems really exciting. And you have not, sounds like not one main character, but actually kind of three main characters. So can you talk a little bit about uh, the three of them? Yes. So my three main characters, uh, and I want to start out by saying that the reason I'm following different characters is I was inspired by the way that RPG video games sometimes do that, where like you, you know, have like, a chapter where you follow one of them and then you go into a different perspective. I wanted to capture that in a book. Um, and the first character that you meet is Captain Sting. Uh, she's a pirate captain. She's swashbuckler, uh, just hardcore, tenacious, uh, everything you would expect from what you'd see uh, from a main pirate, uh, just a woman's perspective. 
Um, and she's very just like confident, sometimes a little too much. Uh, she has respect from other pirates, which is like really awesome to see. Um, she also is very flirtatious with both women and men. Which um, gets her in trouble, at least oh, in the first chapter, yes, right? Yeah, so. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think she's a, she's my favorite character, I'll be honest. Uh, cool. She's just so like powerful and sort of that she's the person that I want to be like, or especially when I was a teenage girl, like I wanted to be that like strong, independent woman. And then sort of on a totally other coin uh, is Princess uh, Elizabeth Worrell. Uh, and she is kind of what you, like in the very beginning, she's kind of what you would expect from a princess who's never been able to leave her palace. Um, she sneaks out and likes to actually read to the children in town. Um, she loves meeting commoners and feels that she needs to learn from the world in order to be a good queen. Um, so she actually... Uh, she disagrees with some stuff that her father's doing. Uh, he, he's trying to start a war and she wants to do whatever she can to stop it and actually runs away with sort of two main goals. One goal is to figure out how to stop this war. And the other goal is to learn about the world. Uh, she totally understands that she doesn't have uh, um, the experience of real life to be a good leader. Um, and she wants to do something about that. Uh, So, yeah, she's just like this really she's very proper and beautiful and, you know, uh, all the things that princesses are supposed to be because she was raised that way. But it actually she really showcases the power of femininity, which I think is really important. Right. Because a lot of times I feel like girls get the message like, oh, you have to be manly to be powerful. But that's not true. Um, And then the third character, I like to describe her as the one everyone can relate to. Um, She's almost more of like, it's still fantasy, but she's more of like your modern day uh, character. Uh, She's actually an aspiring head chef. Uh, She likes to cook. She wants to travel the world to learn all the different flavors. Um, And she has traveled across the world for this like job opportunity, but it's like not going well. She's working for this guy who's a jerk and like isn't listening to her ideas. And she is like, wow, I left home for this. Um, and actually decides to join um, some other travelers who have the goal of seeing every continent in the world. Um, so she's just like ready for adventure. Uh, and all, all three women are on this like coming of age journey to become better people. Um, so that's really what, you know, it's about. When you were, I mean, 14 did did you kind of have these characters all fleshed out or or how much of it i guess has changed maybe over your you know experiences since then because i know that you i think it was one of your blog posts where you were talking about how the novel definitely changed with you know first maybe getting married and then you know having a, a a baby and that sounded like it maybe changed the novel at least to some degree so i would say the like plot has stayed intact the whole time um but the ability to dive deep into like emotions or specific situations is just stronger than it was when I was 14. Um, and the ability to describe what it feels like to fall in love, for example, or to show, uh, like somebody reuniting with their mother that they haven't seen in years. And like the emotion that's going to happen in that scene. Like I wasn't able to comprehend that at that age. Um, so it's really, I just think I've used my emotions and experiences to just dive deeper into what these characters are capable of. Um, and like one big change, uh, there's a couple big changes that I could talk about. One, uh, Captain Sting, she used to be straight. Um, because honestly, I just like, didn't really think about that stuff at that age. I grew up in a very conservative town where that's, that wasn't talked about. Um, But now that I'm older and a part of that community, representation is so important to me uh, that I actually capture it in a few ways in my novel. Um, And it's like, it's one of the most important things for me is to show that, you know, characters like should have a wide range of 
backgrounds and personalities and, you know, uh, desires and all these different things. Right, right. Well, I've got to imagine that like all of your years also with the, uh, the Lady Planeswalkers Society must have helped you kind of with, with some of that at least, right? Absolutely. That's actually how I first started getting involved with the LGBTQ community is through Lady Planeswalkers because that sort of was a natural um, fit for the organization and became like a part of our mission statement pretty early on. Uh, and it actually helped me realize uh, that I myself am bisexual and get comfortable enough with that to come out um, to my family and publicly. Uh, and, you know, that also adds to the importance to me because maybe if I'd had that representation when I was a teenager, I could have realized some of these things sooner. I guess related to the characters, and this is actually the the, the question from my, my daughter, which I think you sort of already answered, but she was just really curious, like, which... You know, which of the three characters do you identify with the most and kind of why? And I think so, I know the answer. I actually feel like it's different parts of me in each character. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, to be honest. Like, I did say that, like, Sting is the who I, like, aim to be person. Um, but Gretchen, I actually think, is the one that I was when I was younger. Like, before I'd found my confidence, before I really figured out what I wanted to do with my life. Um I feel like I really relate to like what she's going through in the like, what am I doing with my life? Like, yes, I want adventure. How do I get that? Um, she's just figuring it out. And we all go through that. Absolutely. Um, and then Elizabeth, I mean, I'm also a pretty feminine person. Um, so I definitely like take that part of myself and pour it into her. Um, and like, I mean, I have like a scene of her like getting ready for a ball and you know, I want it to make it feel realistic, like when I'm getting ready for something and want to look nice. I think women are powerful in every way that women want to be. Um, and I don't think that, you know, wanting to be wanting to look pretty or wanting to wear makeup to express yourself is a bad thing. Um, and I if somebody wants to do that, then I want to support them and, you know, empower them to to be the type of woman that they want to be. Yeah. And I think that's really one of the cool things about your story is that it seems like as a reader, not, you know, not just a girl, but just, you know, anyone who's reading it, they should be able to find some aspect of at least one of those characters that they can identify with the most. Right. And just sort of yes. see themselves in it, which is kind of what we all do when we read stories. You know, we all want to be, you know, whoever the hero or heroine is. Right. And yeah, well, in each, uh, so each one of those characters has like a group, of travelers with them. Um, so it's a wide range of characters. Um, and I go into like all of their backstories a little bit. Uh, so I really do think there's something in there for everyone. I think it's a wide range of diverse characters uh, with all sorts of different perspectives. And I really hope that readers of all backgrounds can grab onto something. Well, speaking, I guess, of a cast of characters, you know, you, you're doing this Kickstarter. And so I've been involved in, you know, helping to set up a Kickstarter, which is going to go live in a couple of months. And so I know how much work it is. And oh, so much work. <laughs> it's definitely not a one person kind of show. And so I'm wondering, you know, who who's the rest of your team that that's been helping you out? So uh, Tara Theo Harris has been incredible uh, for helping me get the Kickstarter set up super early on when I was just thinking of the idea of having a Kickstarter. I set up a call with her. Um, and walked through like why I want to do a Kickstarter. I have multiple artists on the project. So Amanda Sharp did the cover design with the three characters. Uh, Stephanie Martin did the like actual book cover and text design for me, uh, including like the back of the book. Um, and she's actually doing some character art for me as well that I'm going to be using. Awesome. Nice. Um, and uh, Nick Trujillo did my map. He's working on my map right now. Uh, so yeah, lots and lots of people. My husband actually helped me make the video for my Kickstarter and has just been, you know, the supportive husband the whole time through all of it, including the days where I'm crying about the peer reviews. Um, yep. But yeah, and my mom too is somebody like I call every step of the way. Uh, she's read like every version of the book from the first one. Um, so it's been really interesting for her to see this process. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, it must be really exciting for her too, right? Because, 
you know, who knows, like when you were 14, she was probably like, oh, you know, she's writing this story, but probably, <laughs> you know, I mean, you don't know, will anything come of it or something, right? And so yeah. here, here you are, right? Which is well, awesome. Well, both my parents were always so supportive. Like they actually bought me um, a, a roll top writing desk when I was like 16 that I still have. Um, like they have always just been incredible supportive of this dream of mine that I've always had. Well, so let's see. Um, I guess I only have a couple more questions, Great. but... So this is technically a, a retro computing uh, podcast. And so I guess, you know, you said that, you know, you had your favorite games and, you know, like, do you have any other either memories of like old, you know, like retro systems you used to play on or still oh, play yeah. on or. So the or first, what? the first uh, game that I ever remember playing was on Commodore 64. Uh-huh. This little silly Fisher Price like bus school bus game <laughs> and like I was like three years old I couldn't have been much older than that and I just remember just sitting and playing with it for as long as a kid keeps attention at that age um and I think like from then like I knew I was gonna love video games uh and I played like mist with my family like it was a whole family setting that we sat and played mist and like nobody slept or <laughs> anything until we like got through the whole game um, I don't even remember what we played it on. Uh, but yeah, my brother and I had classic Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo. Then we moved to PlayStation. Um, oh, we had a Sega Genesis for a while. So yeah, I was a console gamer growing up. Um, but all of it was like super important to me. And all the Mario games, Mortal Kombat, uh, Bushido Blade, <laughs> just like so many games. Uh, it was, it's been a core part of my life is playing games. Yep, that's great. So what about your son? Are you um, going to get him started playing games or are you Absolutely. trying to... Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep, it's yep. so much a part of my husband and I, like of our life that it would be very hard not to. Um, he, we have been working with him on limits. He has like a, ba like a baby app game on my phone that he's obsessed with. And we are teaching him that, like, oh, you can only play that, like, a little bit on, on only sometimes. Um, and him and I were actually playing uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse. I don't know. If oh, you yeah. yeah. He I was, heard he, of that. Yes. He was learning the controls yesterday and him and I were playing that for a little bit. Um, and he loves watching us play anything with Mario. Uh, like if Mike plays Smash Brothers or uh, we play Super Mario Party. Um so he just loves like right now watching video games with us, which means a lot to us and is great. Do your daughters play games with you? They do. Yeah, we actually um it's kind of fun. We started playing uh role playing games. You know, we, I don't know, they weren't into them for a long time and then um I don't know if you're familiar with the there's a TV show called Leverage that was out a few years ago and it's like um basically like thieves and kind of like Robin Hood kind of thing. So it's set in a modern, you know, set in our time or whatever. Um, and so there was a role playing game that came out based on that. And so they loved, you know, they loved the TV show and I was like, okay, here's my chance. Right. And so then, you know, I got them playing this game and they, they've actually been really enjoying it. And, Yay! You know, and then we also, you know, we do other stuff like, you know, for a long time we were playing Minecraft and kind of, you know, linking all the computers together. And so they could play that with, you oh, know, yeah. with me, but my mom funny... plays Minecraft too. <laughs> Does she? Oh, that's Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the fu if I can tell you like a really funny story with Minecraft though, um, because you know we were playing the game and I would always end up having to find food for them and then cook the food, like in the game. And I was just like, "What am I doing?" Right? Like, you know, I I cook the food for them, you know, in real life, and here I am in the game, like doing the same thing. So that's awesome. Really funny. Yeah. Well, how can uh, how can people find you online and uh, and at your Kickstarter? So you can find my Kickstarter at tifarobles.com. That's T I F A R O B L E S dot com. Um, and I'm on Twitter at tifarobles. Uh, pretty much everywhere: um, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you just look up my name. Um, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Tifa, thank you so much for speaking with me today, and. Uh, Best of luck with your Kickstarter. Thank you so much, Chris. Great to talk right. to you. Yep, take care.